rangelands, particularly the uh, tall grass prairie, grew up with fire and grazing as the major things that imp that were important in their evolutionary development. So if you take away either grazing or fire, then you end up with something that's not a, a tall grass prairie. Particularly if you take away fire, you'll end up with a woodland. And uh, it's simply because without grazing and without fire, the woodland species have an opportunity to shade out the grasses below them as they grow in, in, uh, in stature. So we need to have fire to keep them there, and it's really critical that we burn at the proper time. Mike Collins, live in Greenwood County, Kansas. We don't burn just to make the ground black. We do it for a reason. And there, are, at various times, we may burn earlier in the season for, for reasons, and we may burn later in the spring for, for other reasons. So uh, it's not just we don't do it all on the same day every year. We also utilize it with cattle. Fire also is advantageous besides keeping the, the prairie in a tall grass prairie ecosystem. It increases weight gains on some classes of cattle without any need for fertilizer or herbicides or anything like that. The fire just allows the cattle to, to gain a little more weight in that period of time. It helps the uh, existing wildlife that's been here, the, the native species that have been here, a lot of grassland birds and those kinds of things have been here for a long time and that uh, enhances their habitat by uh, some forms of burning. The only really alternatives, and it wouldn't be anywhere near as good, would be to either to uh, mow it uh, to keep the, the woody species down, which is basically impossible in the Flint Hills. It's, it's, it's uh, not real flat country and there's a lot of rocks. And so uh, some areas are hayed periodically or mowed, but not a very small percentage of it. Uh, you could use herbicides. Well, I mean, we use it a little bit, but as far as on a broad scale across the entire prairie, uh, Number one, you'd be getting rid of a lot of beneficial plants that are out there that the herbicides had, had kill. So we're, we use them sparingly in spot places, but not as a, as a general rule. And without that, or grazing, uh, there's not much else that'll, that'll keep it tall grass prairie. And Kansas State University, the original research work in fire began back about 1918. And since that time, uh, we have looked at primarily for the first half century almost of that time, we worked with uh, the timing of fire because timing is critical with respect to how much production of forage you get, how much production of beef you get, how well you kill woody species. So the timing is critical in that regard. And there's been some experimenting going on on as far as patch burning or um, maybe some summer burns, those kinds of things. And that's still, I would say, in the experimental stage. And so they're sure, it's sure worth looking at where uh, uh, to maintain the ecosystem, uh, we want to do what, what we think is the best thing to do for it as far as timing of burning. And as of right now, it kind of looks like periodic spring burning is, is pretty hard to beat. You have to realize that the, the economic impact of not burning in the Flint Hills is between probably 25 to $35 million per a year increase in the, the productivity. We get 32 pounds per animal more Every, for every animal we have on burned range compared to not burning. So when you, when you spread, uh, when you multiply that out, that's uh, 25 to 35 million dollars. And then when you put the, the uh, typical multiplier effect of seven in, then that becomes a huge economic impact. And so the lack of fire not only is going to cause the grassland to go away, it's going to take money out of the pockets of the people that are in the business of Maine. And these prairies are there because these ranchers have managed them for the last 
150 years in a way that kept them there.